I'd wanted to visit Holy Hill Hermitage for a long time, mainly to meet two sisters who share my surname. I was so pleased I eventually made the trip. Holy Hill is close to the sea. Here the sun glistens in the waters. Here time stops still, or at least slows down. It's quiet here, nothing but country roads, stone walls and green fields. I approach the hermitage along one of those country roads. I spotted the sign, Holy Hill Hermitage, carved into stone. The entrance led me into a vast area. Lots of space, open fields, peace and quiet. Dotted around this space are several hermitages. Each one self-contained. People can come here on retreat to experience the silence and peace. Inside, there is lots of space. They are warm and comfortable. Light too. In the centre of this property is the original house. All around are impressive fir trees and lawns. In the summer, people can sit on these benches and enjoy the view, the lovely garden, the shrubs. Shutter sound music. It is a place of beauty and tranquility. In the garden, there is an original statue of Our Lady. She can be seen with Jesus, who's playing with a dog. Inside the center are constant reminders of our faith. Silence and hope will be our strength. Silence is an important element of this house, and here I met the community, Sister Seal, Patricia, and Brother Thomas. Theirs is a life of prayer and contemplation. God is to be found in the kitchen as well as in the chapel, in the dining room too. The house has been cleverly and tastefully restored. I was impressed with the good use of wood and stone. I like the rustic stairwell. You can relax here, pick up a book from the library. While I was here, I interviewed the two sisters, Seal and Patricia. What actually is this place called? It's, it's called Holy Hill Hermitage. Holy Hill and Hermitage. the reason it's called Holy Hill is actually yeah. because the our founder was a Discalced Carmelite like yeah. you. Yeah. And he came from his mother house in Wisconsin. It's called yeah. Holy Hill. Yeah. And so this is named after a Discalced Carmelite monastery in the United States called Holy Hill. Called Holy Hill. And so, uh, and, and it is a hermitage, which is the key word there too. Mm. That that's, that's what we are, is we have hermitages on the property and we spend a lot of time in silence. And in a sense, I, also, I often say, what we have to sell is silence. That's what we, that's why people come here, mm. is, is for the silence. But we spend about half our time alone. So we spend one week a month, two days a week, completely alone in, in silence. And then on the other days, we have 
some prayer together, we have mass together, and one day a week we have a meal together with everybody in the community and also anybody who comes on retreat. But we and what we have discovered over the years is that it it we need silence to be able to to hear the most real things, to hear the most important things, and so we need and of course to hear God and so. That is the reason that it, and it, that we are here. That is what we want people to be able to come and experience that. But what's really important is that there is a community here who is praying. What we always say is prayer is caught rather than taught. Mm -hmm. And contemplation is caught rather than taught. So we want to be here living this life, a contemplative life where we are praying so that other people can then come and be drawn into that and be able to live out of, in a certain sense, be... be um, to catch the contemplation that that's going on here and, and sister patricia why uh, or rather when did you first come here uh you know to establish this place when was this place first established we came in 1995 and it, it, uh, it had been a mercy convent and we spent the whole first 10 years revamping and revising and remodeling and building hermitages because our, um, our thrust is, is solitude and mm -hmm. um, a community of solitaries, of mm -hmm. course, but it, unless we have the space for, for silence, we, we, we don't have a, a way of life. Right, thank you. And Sister Seal, <clears throat> you, you're from America, aren't you? Chicago, that's a long way away. <laughs> why, why did you personally come here? Well, First, I came to the community, which was the most important thing, and came actually, Pat came first to the... Your she, sisters, she, aren't you? Your natural sister. sisters. Right, and she joined the community first, and then I just came to visit her, and I was so struck by... And, and at that time, where she was living was in a place in Nova Scotia, out in the middle of the woods, where we had bought an old hunting lodge, mm. and it was old cabins and no running water, and but canoes and beauty... But so it was a very fascinating place to me and it's totally non-institutional. I had never seen a religious place that was so uninstitutional and so poor. That was an, another really important factor for me that, that there was something very authentic about it because it was struggling to get something going mm -hmm. that was, um, you know, when it was, and it was a struggle and I was watching people struggle and I was very fascinated by that. So in, I ended up joining that community and also because they were laughing all the time, which is another thing that has always been an important part of the community. And I just thought, you know, they have something I don't have. Yeah. And I think maybe it's God. And so that's why I came to, came to the community. Thank you. And Sister Patricia, why did you come? Because you were the first one to come here. Why, why did you come here? Well, I, again, I'll have to talk about why I came to the community in the first place, yeah. which was way back in the mm -hmm. 70s. And... Uh, I, I came to the desert where we were located, Sedona, Arizona. I w it was recommended by, I was a, a, a Dominican at the time uh, for 12 years, and I was taught to be a woman of prayer and a contemplative, and I felt like I wasn't growing in that direction enough, so I was advised um, by a Dominican about this wonderful place in the desert where I went to... Uh, to, to test the waters and to test the dryness. And I found this very authentic, tiny little struggling community. I had no uh, intention of staying. I was just there for a month long retreat, but a year later they invited me to come back and be part of the team. And it, uh, it just touched something in me that said, yes, this is where I belong. I had no doubts. I got permission. Um, and I came, for God, I wanted to. I, I wanted to. I wanted to experience God, and 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 that's what what I got. Thank you, Sister Patricia. Why would you recommend people to come here? I mean, what would people hope to gain by coming uh, to Holy Hill Hermitage? In this day and age, there are very few places and situations where you can learn to be yourself. You know the. There's so much noise, there's so much distraction, there's so much frenzy. And this is a place with beauty and um, uh, love and laughter and um, quiet. 
Mm. And so a, a person learns to listen, to listen to what's within, and they find that there's so much more there than they ever mm. imagined. You know, that there's this sense of being loved, there's this sense of being yeah. true. They can let go of the superficial stuff that, 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 that doesn't matter and, and start paying attention to what really matters. Um, it's it, it's a very personal thing, and each one has his his or her own way, but it's there for us, each of us. Thank you, Sister Patricia. And Sister Seal, why would you recommend somebody uh, come here? Well, I think Pat did an excellent job of saying why, why it is, but uh, be, for this, the sense of, um, to get to know God is basically what I would say, is when we have students here, I often, when I take them on a tour and I just stop and I say, okay, just now just listen for two minutes. Be absolutely quiet and just listen and then say, what did you hear? And they will say, talk about the river, the trees, the birds, things that they won't hear when they're walking along talking. And he says, that's why we're here, is to be able to just, to be able to listen to those things that we never get to hear when we're too busy or too noisy, too you know, loud. So that, that would be a, a very important time. We often get people who, um, the kinds of people who come here are very fascinating. That's a, one of the great privileges of this life is that we get lots of people. So we get missionaries who come on sabbatical. We get um, uh, lots of therapists who come because they just really need replenishing. You know, who, we get, um, and, but we also get artists, we get um, writers, people like that. It's one of the things that we also have found over the years is that when people spend time in solitude, they get creative. Mm -hmm. And in a certain sense, it's because you don't have anything else to do. And so then you start looking for things to do. And that has been our experience in the community, that people who didn't know they had talents discover their talents. And so we've had people become musicians, in, in some, or somebody comes who plays an instrument, next thing they start writing music because they have the time and they have the space. And of course, writing, we've had lots and lots of people have done a lot of writing here. Lots of people have done a lot of art here. And so there is, um, that's another reason for solitude is to just discover the possibilities, I'd say. Right. It's a, Thank you. you. You've got a very beautiful place, uh, beautiful gardens, beautiful location. Um, what about, um, you know, inside? Uh, so beauty, I noticed uh, beautiful artwork here, statue of Our Lady in the garden. I presume it's Our Lady with the Christ uh, and, and the dog, which is unusual. Um, beautiful flowers, bushes. You're, what, two miles from the sea. So, and, and inside the house too, there's a lot of beauty. So it's quite an impressive place. And it's important to us. Beauty is, is very important to us. Uh, it's uplifting. It's reminding us of who, our, who we are and our best self. Um, and it, it, we've discovered, and we want to point out, that beauty doesn't require a lot of money. It just requires intention, you know, and, and uh, taste. And, and um, it, it's, it's glorious. And yes, thank you. So, in, and then um, in July, I believe you are celebrating the 25th anniversary mm -hmm. of your arrival here. So, so that's going to be, I presume, a big celebration. It is. We're going to do a weekend and have lots of friends from both Ireland and from the United States will be coming, and from Europe too, actually. And we will have, uh, begin on Friday night, but it will culminate on Sunday with a mass celebrated by our bishop. And then afterwards, we will have a big celebration in our back courtyard with Irish music and hot dogs that Thomas will cook on a barbecue. And so it will be a happy celebration, we hope. <laughs> thank you, Sister Seal. Sister Patricia, thank you very much. And uh, I wish you every blessing and uh, a joy when you come to celebrate your 25th anniversary uh, on July the 4th, 5th. It's third, fourth, fifth. Third, fourth, and fifth. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Great.